Well, welcome to another Bible Truth broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Gillum. I'm an itinerant evangelist, believes in expositional preaching. It's a joy to have you on the broadcast again today. I hope you'll have a Bible handy, maybe a notebook, something to write with. We'll find our text today in Psalms 58. We have been on the last two broadcasts uh, looking at some of the six Mick Tom Psalms. They each have that little word Mick Tom uh, in their title. And I have been fascinated that each one of these psalms that David wrote, these miktam psalms, they show us a facet or, or a side or an image of the great diamond that, that we call God. And so we have entitled this series, uh, The Miktam Psalms, of deity's diamonds. Uh, in Psalms 56, we found that it was a hymn of God uh, when David was a convict of fear. And the little diamond of God that we were confronted with is, our God is high and holy. Then on our last broadcast, we looked at Psalms 57. It was a hymn of God when David was in a cave forsaken. The little deity's diamond was this, Our God is with us. Today, we want to go to Psalms 58. We find that it was a hymn of God when David was a captive of frustration. I was at a meeting recently, and several preachers at different times told me, I just don't watch the news anymore. It's just too frustrating. I was looking up that little word, frustration. It means discouraged, uh, feelings of anger, uh, cannot reach a desired goal or supply a need. Feelings of being upset or annoyed, especially because of an inability to change or achieve something. It is in this psalm that we find David is dealing with frustration. As we begin to open the psalm, I'm, I'm drawn, first of all, to the unmovable worth in this psalm, seen in the title, says in Psalms 58, title, to the chief musician, Al Tashath, Miktam of David. That little word, Miktam, there it is again, to engrave upon the mind for pondering or thinking upon by singing it over and over again. He's told the chief musician, the temple choir director, sing this one over and over, engrave it upon their mind, keep bringing it to their thoughts. He says this was an al a psalm. Don't discard it. Don't delete it or misplace it. Keep it close. Uh, three uh, possible uh, times when this might have been written uh, in our study of uh, the, the history of this psalm. One uh, was when Saul reigned. Uh, David saw the power of Saul sitting in judgment upon others. Uh, when he was more wicked than them, was very frustrating to David. Some have said it may have been written when he first came to the throne and he saw that the judicial system, making the laws and judging the people, when they were more wicked than the people, it was very frustrating to David. Some have said he might have written it when Absalom 
uh, sought to steal the kingdom when he had united the people around him, when Absalom was uh, full of wickedness and disunity himself. And David found himself to be very frustrated. We're living in a day and age when the righteous, the godly of this day, when we look around us at the political setting and the laws that are being made and, and the generation in which we're living in, it can become very frustrating. But here's the little deity's diamond that uh, David shares with us in this psalm. It is this, our God reigns. I would say to us today as we look at the surroundings and the settings politically and religiously and emotionally and financially, I would say to us today, Shh, our God is in his holy temple and he is reigning. The unmovable work in this song. But I see also the uncovering of the wicked in this psalm. In this text, David begins to ask questions of the judicial system. Uh, seems to be laws for thee, but not for me. I read recently of a judge uh, on the same day, uh, sentenced the 21-year-old uh, uh, who had stole a six-pack of beer to 25 years in prison, while another who had embezzled $8,000 from a firm gave him five years probation. That's very frustrating, but shh, our God reigns. He's in his holy temple, and he is reigning. I notice in the text uh, that David uncovers their humanity. He says in verse number one, Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge rightly? Then this little phrase here, O ye sons of men. David reminds them that they are sons of men. This is a term uh, uh, of reminding us of our human origin. We are creatures of dust. Read in an article some time ago that 65% of the dust in our house has our DNA in it. Uh, uh, every hour, one million dead particles fall off of us. Paul told us that we have this treasure, Christ, in an earthen vessel. The little word earthen is dirt. The little word vessel is the little word bag. He reminds them in the judicial system, he said, you are but creatures of dust. I would remind those in the political system around us, as well as myself, a preacher of the gospel, that we are but dust. But can I remind us today, shh, our God reigns. He is in his holy temple. Uh, man rules, but God reigns. David uncovers their humanity. David also uncovers their heart. He says in verse number two, yea, in heart, Ye work wickedness. It is uh, those that are making laws for us. Often they don't know their own heart. Uh, Jesus said, out of the heart, man's mouth speaks. The Old Testament prophet said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Many are making laws for us. Many are controlling our country. Many are in great religious power today, and they don't know their own heart. 
but to you that are walking righteously with God. Could I say to you today when it frustrates you, shh, our God reigns. He is in his holy temple and he is reigning. Not only does David uncover their humanity in their heart, but he uncovers their heritage. He says in verse three, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are the deaf adders that stoppeth their ears, which will not hearken to the voice of the charmers, charming never so wisely. David tells them that they go forth from the womb telling lies. Satan is the father of lies. Mark Twain says, I don't remember the first lie I told. He said, but I do remember the second. He says, a pen was sticking in me at nine days old, and I advertised it very loudly. He says, I was coddled and pitied and given extra rations between meals. And my human nature has caused me to continue until today. He says, I've never known a child not to bow to this temptation. John said, many deceivers have entered into the world. Oh, how frustrating. But shh, our God reigns. He is in his holy temple and he is reigning. At continuation of this thought, David uncovering their heritage says that they are like a serpent, like an adder in verse 4. These are both terms of uh, uh, that are used for the devil. Uh, a snake cannot be charmed. Remember, Satan never plays fair. He's the father of lies. He is the father of the lost. You cannot charm him. You cannot change him. Uh, you cannot uh, conduct him or get him to do. Those that are full of him, you cannot charm them. Very frustrating. But shh, our God reigns. He is running the show today. Uh, I notice also in this psalm the undoing uh, for uh, the wicked. David un uh, uh, uncovers the, uh, the wicked in this psalm. There is the unmovable worth in this psalm. But there is the undoing for the wicked in this psalm. This verse, he shares six pictures of what shall happen to the wicked in the coming days. One in verse six, break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lion, O Lord. He says the lion, he's, uh, Satan says he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But to the righteous, he has no teeth. He may gum you, he may leave his saliva on you. You may have to go to the word of God for a washing of the word. Remembering Satan's attacks, shh, our God reigns. He's in his holy temple. I notice in verse number seven, let them melt away as waters which run continually. He says they'll be like a stream. They look like they have a mighty flow, but a closer look it is melted and dried away. The child of God sees it as but dry dust. Shh, our God is in his holy temple. He is reigning says in verse number uh, seven, he says, when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as it cut in pieces. The arrows that Satan shoots at the righteous, God has broken the arrow tip off of them. No weapon formed against us uh, shall be able to stand. Our God is in his holy temple and he is reigning. 
says in verse number eight, another picture as a snail which melted away. Let every one of them pass away. He says the snail, he says they're like snails. As they sliver off, they'll just leave their slimy trail because our God reigns. He says in verse number eight, he says like the untimely birth of a woman that they may not see the sun. He says the wicked one day shall wish that their mama uh, still born them, that they never had a birthday. They never saw the light of day. How come? Shh, because our God reigns. He says in verse number nine, for your pots can feel the thorns. He shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. He says the wicked will get together in their big banquets to eat their little dainties. The wind of the Holy Ghost will blow away everything that they have possessed and had encountered. How come? Shh, because our God reigns. He's in his holy temple. I see last of all, the unconquering among the wicked. Let us not sound retreat in this hour. But let us sound charge because our God reigns. He says in verse 10, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Uh, when the righteous see God's wrath fall upon the wicked, Oh, let us not be frustrated, but let us rejoice. Oh, Graham Scoggy, the great Keswick preacher, he says, if it is right for God to destroy the wicked, it cannot be wrong for his uh, servants of righteousness to rejoice in what he has done and what he will yet do. Shh, our God is in his holy temple and he is reigning. He says in verse number 11, so that a man shall say, verily there is a reward for the righteous. Verily he is a God that judgeth in the earth. God reigns forever. The righteous can say with assurance, how lovely on the mountain are the feet of him who brings good tidings, announcing peace, claiming news of happiness. Our God reigns, our God reigns. Out of the tomb he came with grace and majesty. He is alive, he is alive. God loves us so. We see here his hand, his feet, his side. Yes, we know he is alive. Our God reigns. Oh, when I see the reigning power of God, I am not frustrated with life because he is reigning. Meek as a lamb that's dumb as a sheep before his shearers, his life came down upon the ground like pouring rain that we might be made one with him by his own blood. Our God is in his holy temple, and he is reigning. Been a joy to have you on the broadcast today, studying these Nick Tom Psalms. Thanks for listening.